How reckless, gullible, and greedy investors can make you rich. Hey there, my name is Mark Messier. I'm a full-time investor and trader in one of the most exciting and profitable sectors of the stock market. A sector that routinely separates reckless, gullible, and greedy investors from their money and hands it to those of us who play it smart, safe, and careful. When you play it right, it's a sector that can bring you rich rewards almost immediately and even help you build a six or seven figure portfolio in just two or three years, even if you're starting with a small grub stake like I did. You see, believe it or not, over the past two and a half years, I've taken a modest $7,480 and parlayed it into $289,635 in this sector, an eye-popping gain of 3,772%. Hard to believe? Perhaps. But I'm not asking you to believe anything just yet till you see the evidence for yourself. All I ask is that you refrain from disbelieving until you've had a chance to consider my proof. It'll just take a few minutes, yet the rewards can be enormous. The formula I'm going to tell you about in this video can change your life for the better in so many exciting ways. Imagine escaping the cubicle lifestyle, like I did, and spending all the time you want with your family and with your friends. Or finally having the time and the money to take those vacations you've always dreamed of. Or having the peace of mind that comes with knowing that your retirement will be fully funded and that you won't have to rely on Uncle Sam or your kids to take care of you down the road. And that's possible with my formula, which makes the profits predictable, repeatable, and surprisingly regular. The really nice thing is you can make all of this happen without taking big risks. In fact, as you'll see, I let the reckless, gullible, and greedy investors I mentioned a moment ago take all the big risks, while I reap the big rewards. And by the way, I'm also not some sort of investment genius who can do calculus in his head or analyze balance sheets with one glance. In fact, when I started, I didn't have an iota of real investment experience. I was never a financial planner, stockbroker, a money manager, or anything like that. Actually, I'm just a regular guy who, through sheer dumb luck, stumbled across a proven formula for taking money out of a particular sector of the market by the truckload. As I mentioned, I got started back in 2009 with a small grub stake of just $7,480. And if I've used my formula to grow it to $289,635, a return of 3,772.13%. And that's despite the turmoil that has roiled the stock market over the last month or so. Imagine what I would have done if I would have started with $25,000 instead. I'd be sitting on $968,032, nearly a million dollars, after less than three years. That's what's possible with my formula. Now, of course, I don't expect you to take my word for any of this. That's why in this video, I'm not only going to tell you how my formula can turn it all around for you, as it did for me, I'm also going to provide you with irrefutable proof that what I say is true. In other words, I'm not just going to tell you about my winning investments. I'm going to give you full access to every one of my brokerage statements so you can see exactly what I traded and when over the last two and a half years. You'll see every exciting winning, every painful loser, and exactly how much I made or lost on every trade. And you'll see it with your own two eyes. For added proof, I've had the whole thing confirmed by a CPA who took my statements, contacted my broker, and verified they were 100% real and that I really did turn $7,480 into $289,635 over the last two and a half years. With that in mind, at the end of this video, I'll give you a link where you can go to to check out my track record, warts and all, at your leisure. Plus, I'll even include the CPA's phone number, so you can call her and verify my track record for yourself if you wish. Also, that you can see that I'm the real deal. Now before I get into my formula, I'd like to tell you how I stumbled across it so you can see for yourself that it's eminently sensible and that you're fully capable of using it immediately to increase your profits. Okay, remember those reckless, gullible, and greedy investors I mentioned a moment ago? Well, I hate to admit it, but I used to be one of them. Searching the market for the big score, believing in every stock rumor that I heard, and then carelessly throwing money at stocks I thought would make me rich overnight and inadvertently lining the pockets of investors much savvier than myself. All of it started back in 2001 when I was a crime analyst for a police department in Northern California. I sat in the front of a computer all day long and studied crime statistics. 
I was a bit of a computer geek. It was a cool job for me at first. I got a little of the excitement of law enforcement, but none of the danger. All of the fun and no gun, as my local newspaper put it. But like most jobs, after a while, it was just a job. I was stuck in a cubicle all day, every day. And believe me, those three walls were starting to close in on me. Perhaps you've been there. Ironically, while I was trapped in my cubicle, I can often hear the prisoners playing basketball in the jail activity yard. They were outside having fun, while I sat in an 8 foot by 8 foot cell for 8 to 10 hours a day, staring bleary eyed at a computer screen. It was a little depressing to say the least. I didn't want to be in jail, of course, though it sometimes felt like I was, but I did envy those guys who were having fun while I was working. It's not that I wanted to be outside playing ball, I just wanted more time to spend with my family. And it, I was bothered by the fact that when I got home from work, the last thing I felt like doing was playing with my three-year-old son. I just wanted to crash on the couch and relax. But like millions of other tired fathers, I forced myself to get the energy to play with him. And of course, this is anything but the life of my dreams. And I certainly didn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. But in any case, I had dabbled here and there in the stock market for years and mostly lost money. I well remember losing half my $2,000 life savings during the dot-com crash thanks to an ill-timed investment in a NASDAQ 100 ETF. I'd also lost money thanks to dumb investments in Starbucks and Krispy Kremes, donuts, two places I foolishly reasoned would do well because the people I worked with loved coffee and donuts. But my most painful loss was a near 100% bath I took on a penny stock that a friend of mine assured me was headed to the moon. It was supposed to make me rich, so I recklessly poured a big chunk of my savings into it and got my head handed to me. Probably should have stopped investing right then and there. But as fate would have it, I didn't. And long last, my luck began to turn. I happened to hear on the radio that, thanks to the financial crisis, Bank of America, a former employer of mine, was trading for around $3 a share. This seemed crazily low to me, and I had a hunch that it would go up. Now that was the extent of my analysis at the time. I played a hunch. However, this time I got lucky. Better than tripled my money in just two months as Bank of America jumped from $3.19 where I bought it to more than $10. I was hooked. And it was about the time that I discovered the Yahoo Finance stock market message boards. Something I don't recommend to anybody. If you're not familiar with them, suffice to say that they're best described by the way Obi-Wan Kenobi describes most Eisley's spaceport in the original Star Wars movie. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. And no kidding, online message boards are full of liars, penny stock pumpers, rumor mongers who have virtually nothing of value to share with anybody. But there I was, too naive to know any better feeling cocky over my Bank of America profits and still too reckless to do any real stock analysis. I foolishly fell for a couple of stocks being pumped on the message boards. But once again, I was acting recklessly, thanks to my starry-eyed visions of getting rich overnight. But for once, the stars actually aligned for me. No, those stocks didn't make me wealthy, but I did manage to sell one for a 225% profit, and the second made me 140%. Now, this was pure dumb luck, like winning the slots in Vegas. Does happen from time to time, just enough to sucker tens of thousands of investors and gamblers into thinking it can happen to them. So things could have easily just have gone the other way. And if they had, if I lost my money, which by all means I should have, I probably would have thrown in the towel on the investing game altogether. And I'd still be sitting in my cubicle at the police station dreaming of a better life. Fortunately, at that point, something clicked in my head. I realized I was going to have to rely on something other than luck and message board stock tips if I was going to regularly make any money as an investor. After all, if making big money stocks were as easy as logging onto a message board, why didn't anyone bother working at all? I began to do some research on the stocks that I had gotten lucky on and the sector they were a part of. That's when the lightning that changed my life struck. I stumbled across an investor online who was making a killing investing in the very sector I was curious about. In fact, between 2009 and 2011, this guy Mike managed a profit of over $200,000 while not investing that much money. And he had a very unique way of doing it, which I'll describe in this video with his permission, of course.
Unfortunately, I had one big problem with the way Mike did things. He took far too much risk for my taste. It's no surprise, really. He's younger than I am. He's single. He isn't worried about supporting a family, even though he easily could have. And he's a skilled trader who watches the market all day long. Now, I suppose it's possible I could have done things his way, but I'd shudder to think what my wife would say if I came home one day and told her I'd lost half our money on yet another stock I thought was going to the moon. Fortunately, I was able to adapt Mike's formula to my more risk-adverse personality, and the results speak for themselves. The more success I had, the more I thought about sharing what I'd learned with other investors. I resisted the temptation, mostly out of fear that nobody really cared about my formula or my success would think me some sort of blowhard for even talking about it. But at the urging of a friend, a pretty decent investor in his own right, who assured me that I had something real of value to share, I decided to go public with my formula and have begun sharing it with you and many other investors. Now, as I mentioned, I love getting big returns, but I can't stand taking big risks, which is why I pretty much stick to stocks. I do occasionally recommend an option to investors who don't mind a little added risk, but you don't need to buy options to make a handsome return with my formula. And you won't ever see me writing covered calls or using leverage to goose up my returns. On the other hand, I never buy large or mid-cap stocks either. They're too big for me to make the kind of gains I'm looking for. Besides which, hundreds and hundreds of other analysts are already following these companies and moving investors in and out from them, further reducing our opportunity to make decent profit. I stick strictly with small caps, mostly companies with a market cap under $250 million that are trading for under $5 a share. Companies of this size have lots of profit opportunity and if they're in the right sector, are a great fit for my formula. So am I talking about technology stocks, junior oil or energy stocks, natural resource stocks? None of the above. So Lynn, let's get started. For the last two and a half years, I've been making money hand over fist in the sector of the market that most investors know can be highly profitable. However, they also see it as risky and full of peril. They're right. It is highly profitable for some investors. When you play it the way the vast majority of investors do, it's risky as well. However, I'm happy to say that while my careful system produces high returns that this sector is famous for, it also sucks away so much of the risk that even conservative investors can comfortably devote a portion of their portfolio to this exciting sector. Okay, I've kept you hanging long enough. The sector I use to make all that money over the last two and a half years is the small cap biotech sector a sector full of exciting companies with incredible stories to tell. Companies working on medical and technological breakthroughs that will one day take your breath away and change your life in ways you can't even imagine. I've looked at companies with technologies designed to regrow amputated limbs, to restore sight to the blind, to let the paralyzed walk again, to make cancer, diabetes, and Alzheimer's extinct, even to manufacture hamburger and steak in a laboratory without even involving a cow. I mean, the stuff is out there. It's really cool. The profits those new technologies will one day produce are truly breathtaking. But there's a problem. Far too many investors get caught up in all the excitement surrounding a particular stock and its technology and wind up investing in a good story rather than a good stock. But really, who can blame them? After all, who wouldn't want to have a piece of the company that cured cancer or got the paralyzed out of their wheelchairs? At least then you'd be part of something important. Seems likely you'd make a lot of money, too. Better yet, you'd have something to brag about to your buddies at the bar or to your obnoxious brother-in-law at the next family gathering. I know where those investors are coming from. I can well remember sitting in my cubicle, bored out of my skull, and desperate for a little excitement. It was my desire for a little excitement in my life and wanting to provide a better life for my wife and kids that drew me to biotech stocks in the first place. Now, my point is, is simply that there's nothing wrong with getting excited about a biotech stock or about investing in something fun and important. Now the problem is, and it comes in when you get sucked in by a stock's exciting story and or get emotionally attached to the stock and begin dreaming about a big score riding the stock from a dollar to fifty dollars when it gets FDA approval for its drug or its device. As I've learned from painful experience, once that dream takes hold, it's hard to let go. As a result, many investors throw caution at the wind and recklessly pour way too much of their money into companies that have great stories but will never get FDA approval 
nor go to $50, nor ever make them rich. All that excitement leads them to make careless, even reckless decisions about their money. And as a result, a lot of the money those investors pour into the market winds up in my pocket and in the pockets of subscribers to my investment service. In essence, these investors are practicing a version of buy and hope investing. They buy and then hope for FDA approval. Sure, the logic seems sound. Invest in a stock with an awesome drug or device and then cash in big when the FDA approves it. A no-brainer, right? Wrong. The fact is, when you invest this way, you're playing chicken with the FDA. You see, the FDA approves a shockingly low 17% of the drugs and devices that go through the approval process. It denies many that work just fine but have run afoul of the FDA for a number of obscure or technical reasons that even the most experienced biotech investors rarely see coming. Believe me, the fastest and easiest way to lose a ton of money in biotech is to be holding a stock when its drug or device gets rejected by the FDA. Worse yet, as you'll see in a moment, even when you win that game of chicken and your favorite stock does get FDA approval for its drug or device, you're still likely to wind up losing money. What's an investor to do? Enter my biocatalyst run-up formula. It takes a completely different approach. For starters, I never, ever count on FDA approval. In fact, I don't care one way or another whether a drug or device gets approval. It's just not relevant to my formula. With my formula, you'll make money whether the stock you buy gets FDA approval for their drug or device or not. And you'll make every penny long before the FDA renders the decision. Next, I never get caught up in a stock story or its exciting technology. Instead, I analyze each stock with the same cold and calculating eye that helped me analyze crime statistics back in my cubicle days. Finally, I never go for the big score. It's too hard and it's much too risky. I know, it's fun to dream of making 10,000% killing on one stock. Just as somebody always wins the lottery, occasionally an investor gets lucky and makes a fortune off one biotech or another. But that doesn't make playing the lottery or going for an investment home run particularly good money-making strategies. I'm not about to rely on dumb luck to build my fortune and secure my retirement. If I did, I'd be in Vegas, not the stock market. At least in Vegas, they give you free drinks when they take your hard-earned money. Besides, if you do hit the occasional home run, you'll take such large losses in between these homers that you'll have little or nothing to show for your efforts in the end. No thanks. You see, I managed to escape my cubicle and live life on my own terms where I get to see my wife and kids as much as I want to. I have plenty of free time and I have enough money to really enjoy life to its fullest. I'm not about to put any of that at risk and I don't think you should either. That's why I've embraced a tortoise-like, slow and steady pace to building my wealth. I'm not looking to make millions overnight. I'm content to double or triple my money on a stock and then move on to the next opportunity. That's the approach that helped me turn $7,480 into $289,635 in just two and a half years. It's the approach that has put me on the road to a million dollar retirement. Now it's not as exciting perhaps as making an overnight killing on one stock, but it's a lot more reliable and a lot less risky. Besides, I think it's fair to say I've made some pretty nice profits over the years. Just consider a few of the stocks my subscribers and I have made money on. Fibrocell Science rocketed up 242% in four months. Neoprobe Corporation shot up 204% in just over six months. Depamed, 171% in six months. Arena Pharmaceuticals handed us 158% windfall. Orexigen Therapeutics, 129%. Exact Sciences, 125%. Vivas, 118%. 99% on Raptor Pharmaceuticals, 89% on Peace of Vidya, 86% with Mankind, 84% on Adventrix Pharmaceuticals, 82% in Transit Pharmaceuticals in five months, and 79.75% with Opti Optimer Pharmaceuticals in nine months. I could go on and on, but you get the idea. Using my formula, I'm routinely able to identify biotech winners that could double or triple your money in a matter of months. Of course, not every stock I recommend is a winner. I do have losers from time to time. For example, we lost 10% on ANX, 18% on CPIX, and 13% on BIOD. 
but seeing clearly as I've managed to turn $7,480 into $289,635 in just the last two and a half years, clearly my winners more than make up for my losers. So then what's the secret to my success? How is it that I'm able to routinely crank out gains like these while most investors in biotech stocks are losing their shirts? And how on earth do I make money on stocks that fail to get FDA approval? The key to the formula is to invest only in good companies with an upcoming clinical or regulatory catalyst. Now that doesn't sound very earth-shaking or exciting, I know, but it's the key piece of the profit puzzle that I learned from my online friend Mike and it works like crazy. When the profits start pouring in, you can finally afford the lifestyle you and your family have always dreamed of. Believe me, you'll quickly find it to be one of the most exciting things in your life. So then, what's a clinical or regulatory catalyst? It's simply an event in the near future that will have an important impact on the biotech stock in question. And that serves as a catalyst to attract investors into the stock and to drive its price higher. Now, the most obvious catalyst event is the date on which the FDA will approve or deny a new drug application. Other catalysts include significant clinical trial data that's about to be released, or the findings of an FDA advisory panel, where medical experts meet to make a recommendation about a particular device or drug. At times, the catalyst can even be a medical conference where a specific drug or device will be discussed. Once these events become known to investors, the stock in question begins to attract those who believe these catalysts will produce good news, that the FDA will approve the drug or device, that the clinical results will be stellar, that the advisory panel will give a thumbs up to the drug or device, or that those attending the medical conference will eagerly embrace the new technology. Investors expect that these catalysts will dry, drive the stock up, up and away, so that they can cash in big when the time is right. So let's say, for example, that the FDA has set a date for approval or denial of a company's new drug application. Once the date becomes widely known, the stock begins to attract investors who believe the drug in question will garner FDA approval. As anticipation builds, traders and investors come pouring into the stock. The price begins to move, something that attracts even more investors. These investors convince themselves that the FDA is going to approve the new drug application and that the stock, the stock will soar even further as a result. The fact that the stock is already moving only serves to confirm their belief. This anticipation creates a sort of an emotional frenzy as more and more investors pile in with the hopes of making a killing. As the date draws closer, the action only intensifies. Everyone begins to count their chickens, and very few of them even consider the possibility that the FDA might just say no. Instead, they get caught up in the excitement of all the money they're going to make. But as I mentioned earlier, those investors are playing chicken with the FDA, and they're taking a terrible risk. That's why when emotions are at their highest, when investors are in a frenzy over a stock, when it seems that wealth for all is in the offering, I do something that seems crazy. I sell, long before the FDA renders a verdict, on the stock in question. I sell even if I love the stock, even if I love the company's technology, and even if I'm convinced that the FDA approval is inevitable. None of that matters. I take the money and run. No ifs, ands, or buts. No exceptions. I do this for two reasons. First of all, I refuse to play chicken with the FDA. Look, the FDA is an unpredictable government bureaucracy that denies even the most promising drugs and devices for all sorts of reasons. Some sane reasons, some insane. Or it sends them back for more testing, more clinical trials, or to work out a manufacturing kink or whatever. The point is nobody can predict what the FDA will do, and I'm not about to take a chance that they'll turn the application down. After all, when the FDA denies an application for a new drug or device, the company's stock inevitably tanks, and investors typically lose 50 to 75% of their money. And that's a risk that I'm simply not willing to take no matter how much I love the stock in question. Let me give you a few examples. I got my subscribers into Transept Pharmaceuticals in December 2010. We made some nice profits as it nearly doubled from its initial price of $6.50. As the decision date for its new drug application approached, it rose as high as $11.88. Clearly, I'd left some profits on the table, but then, to everyone's surprise, the FDA, FDA denied its drug application. Result, the stock crashed a heartbreaking amount, all the way down to $3.45 a share. 
Then there's Biodell, which I re recommended at three dollars and forty-seven cents in July two thousand ten. It shot up, and I re recommended to sell. By September, the, when the FDA rendered its decision, it was at five dollars and thirty-three cents a share. Well, the decision was negative, and it proceeded to fall down to a dollar sixty-three once the FDA denied its application. In May 2010, I recommended Arena Pharmaceuticals because of an FDA advisory panel was about to make a recommendation about the company's new weight loss drug. After my recommendation, it more than doubled from its beginning mark at $3.08 when I sold. It went as high as $7.95. In July, the FDA advisory panel said thumbs down to the new drug, and the stock promptly crashed to $1.60 a share. A horrifying loss for investors, unfortunate enough to still be invested in the company. I could give you dozens of additional examples, but I think you can see why I'm so eager to get out early with my profits intact. In fact, that's exactly what my subscribers and I did with all three of these stocks, earning double or triple digit profits besides the fact that all three of these saw their drugs shot down by the FDA. But of course, it's no surprise that these stocks dropped drastically in price following an FDA rejection. I mean, you'd expect that to happen. And most investors are surprised to find that FDA approval, far from being a surefire road to riches, can also result in losses for investors who hang on too long. For starters, the expectation of FDA approval is usually already factored into the price for the stock. It's what drove the stock up in the first place. And there's not much more to be gained from the FDA's approval. Furthermore, many investors and traders have shockingly short attention spans. They're always looking for the next big thing, and they repeatedly jump from investment to investment. So when FDA approval comes, and they don't immediately see massive profits, they get out and they're moving on to greener pastures. And if you don't get out before they do, you're left holding the bag when the stock begins to tank. Finally, many companies see the higher stock price as an opportunity to raise money by issuing more shares. This dilution drives down the stock price simply by increasing the number of shares available. Again, if you still own shares, you're left holding the bag. Take Lynette Company. From September to December 2010, it shot up 63% from $4.10 to $6.70. Then came the FDA approval date, and just like that, it fell right back to $4.25, nearly erasing all of investors' gains. Zenaport saw its stock climb from $6.02 in September 2010 to $11.34 in 2011 after the FDA approved its drug Horizon, a nice 88% profit. But immediately after FDA approval, the stock fell to $6.82, a 66% collapse that nearly erased all the gains investors had made. Finally, there's Neopro Corporation, which I first recommended on November 23, 2010 at $1.80 a share. Investors better than tripled their money as it ran to $5.48 a share on May 31st, a gain of 204%. Those who failed to get out before the company released positive clinical triad data about its new drug lymphoseque saw most of their returns evaporate as the stock quickly fell back to $2.20 a share. So are you beginning to see why I like to get out early? Before the catalyst event that's supposed to make us all rich, it reduces your risk. It makes all the profits more reliable and more predictable. And it lets me move on to new opportunities without lying awake at night praying for good news from the FDA or clinical trials. And believe me, the peace of mind is worth its weight in gold. Of course, all of this is dependent on identifying those all-important clinical and regulatory catalyst dates and then getting into the stock before every other Tom, Dick, and Harry investor. Because there's hundreds of these catalysts every year you can't be haphazard about it. Nor clearly can you invest in every company that has an upcoming catalyst. That brings me to another critical component of my formula, the clinical and regulatory catalyst calendar. It was actually developed by my friend I mentioned earlier, Mike. You see, until Mike created this calendar, there was no central repository where you could find catalyst dates. You had to go out and do all the research yourself, and believe me, that takes a lot of time. So Mike created this calendar to act as a database for tracking every catalyst date his research uncovered. Now both of us regularly add to it and use it in our own trading, and I share it with my subscribers of my service. With this calendar in hand, my subscribers and I know what's coming, 
and I have a manageable list of stocks to focus my research on. After all, if a company's next catalyst date is several years off, I don't need to waste time researching it further because it clearly doesn't fit in my formula. In fact, I'm most interested in stocks with catalyst dates that are a few months off because they're the best candidates for a quick run-up. So while stocks with dates that are six or eight months off still go under the calendar, I don't have to worry about immediately digging into them. When the time comes, however, they're right there in my calendar and they're ready for research. In any case, when my research identifies a catalyst stock I believe is a good candidate, my goal is to get in before it's noticed by the mass of investors. The plan is to spot an under-the-radar trade before everybody else. Then as the catalyst date approaches, let the emotional frenzy drive up the price. Then, of course, get out with our profits intact long before the catalyst date. With that in mind, I look at the stock's volume. I look at its price over the last 52 weeks. The volume is below average and the stock price is below the midpoint of the 52-week range. That means investors haven't really noticed it yet. And I've got a good shot at getting a nice run-up before the catalyst. Typically, I like to get in two to three months ahead of the catalyst, and I'm looking for a 20% to 100% profit. Though, as you've seen, I manage to do a lot better at times. To help you envision this a little better, I've taken the next three months of the Clinical and Regulatory Catalyst calendar, and I've turned it into a PDF that you can download and check out at your convenience. You'll get a nice visual of what I'm talking about. You'll see some of the stocks I'm now recommending or might recommend down the road, and you'll know what you need to know in order to create your own calendar. Just click the link below and it will automatically download to your computer. Of course, I make all this sound so easy. The fact is, selecting the most profitable biotechs requires many hours of careful research and analysis. And most biotechs don't come close to meeting my strict criteria. More importantly, it's critical to get in early, before the masses of investors. One of the easiest ways to lose a lot of money is to jump in after the catalyst has already driven up the price substantially. You absolutely must get into these stocks before they're covered on CNBC or frenzied and featured on the Yahoo Finance board. That's why in the second video of this series, which I'll be releasing in a few days, I'll walk you through my research process. I'll show you how I identify biotech catalyst stocks that offer the sweetest profit opportunities well ahead of their catalyst dates. Also, that you can begin cashing in with my BioCatalyst run-up strategy. In the meantime, I appreciate any comments you have on this video and on what I've shared with you. I'd love to hear what you think. If you have any questions, by all means, fire away. I want my method to be crystal clear to you, so I plan to answer as many questions as possible in a future video. Oh, and before I forget, you'll also find a link to the website where you can check out and verify what I've made over the last two and a half years. And you'll see for yourself that I really did turn $7,480 into $289,635 with biotech stocks. In any case, I'll have the next video up in this series within a few days. I'll send you an email just as soon as it's up, so please watch your inbox. That video will reveal exactly how I find biotech stocks on the verge of exploding for double and triple digit profits. Better yet, I'll soon announce a contest where you could win a free one-year membership in my service. Please watch for that, and don't forget to leave your comments below. In closing, thank you for joining me today. I hope you found what I've revealed to be helpful. I'll see you in a couple of days in the next video.